Good evening, uh, vinyl community, record collectors, music lovers, and uh, anyone who might find themselves watching this video. The subject tonight will be about the famous uh, the record label Vertigo Swirl and that era between 1969 and 1973. Now, I'm not a completist and I'm not too specific on uh, labels uh, or anything, but there are some labels that I like to collect, uh, especially the records I find enjoyable to listen to on those labels. Uh, and tonight will be about my collection of uh, Vertigo Swirl records. And uh, perhaps to spot some differences uh, on the different versions of the label, such as the UK label, the US label, the German label, and perhaps uh, an odd one out, the French label. Uh, I think the video will be in at least two parts, uh, because I don't think my camera can record more than 10 minutes at a time. So uh, let's see how that goes. Let's just start. And uh, I'll go somewhat alphabetically. I'll start with the Scottish band Begis Opera. Um, you may, might have heard about them. Uh, they were given uh, a contract on uh, the Vertigo label and uh, their first record was released in uh, 1970 and was called Act One. This is uh, a quite enjoyable uh, album I find. Uh, very prog psychedelic. <laughs> Standard for its time with uh, guitars and Hammond organs and uh, fairy tale lyrics and everything. Good musicianship on this one. And uh, yes, it's a rather nice piece of music. Uh, for some reason, this is not uh, most expensive to get on the, the Vertigo Swirl label. Even the UK one isn't that expensive compared to other releases, but uh, I think around 1000 to 1500 kroners or 1220 uh, euros or so, but uh, worth every money. I even got a German version on Vertigo's World there. That's how much I like the record. <laughs> Uh, Begis Oprah's second album from 1971, Quarters of Change, uh, is a little bit more mellow in the sound. And they had uh, added an, uh, a keyboard player uh, who mainly played uh, Mellotron, actually. So on this record, there's the addition of the wonderful Mellotron. Uh, by the way, one way to spot a complete UK edition is with the swirl inner sleeve. These swirl inner sleeves uh, were only issued on the UK editions actually. I think some of the Dutch ones had an, uh, a similar sleeve but not quite like that one. Of course large swirl on the A side and uh, vertigo and every information on the B label, B side label. This is a very good album as well. I really like Begis Opera, Scottish prog for you there. Now, <clears throat> let me just put this away. The third album and the last on the Vertigo Swirl label was uh, Pathfinder. And this is perhaps the finest moment. Soft uh, prog, they went more and more soft actually. And this, I don't think I'll be able to show you all of the cover, but it's a six panel fold out poster. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> it's a really, really large poster. I don't know if you can see everything in the camera there, but uh, this one is uh, rare to find is in this condition quite expensive these days but a very wonderful album 
uh, you can go for the cheaper alternative, the uh, German edition, which has a standard gatefold sleeve, or the repress actually on uh, the UK Vertigo label with the six panel fold out sleeve. Uh, I think it's costing about a tenth of the original. And it almost looks like the first press, so why not go for that one? The music is the same. But a wonderful band there, Beggar's Opera. The next one is a fairly rare and unknown record, uh, not unknown to Vertigo Swirl label uh, collection, uh, collectors, but uh, to many others, this band called simply Ben. Uh, is fairly unknown to to the masses. This was a UK-based uh, uh, jazz rock group, uh, instrumental all the way through. Um, many people find this uh, perhaps the weakest moment of Vertigo Swirl label, uh, Vertigo Swirl releases. Sorry. But I find this uh, very good, actually. Quirky, English-sounding <laughs> jazz rock. Uh, I quite like it. And this is uh, this uh, was also released in uh, Italy, actually, in a single cover. And uh, there is a bootleg out there with uh, red tinted glasses instead of uh, lilac glasses and that's a bootleg so beware if you want if you are seeking for this one do not buy the one with the red glasses now <clears throat> to a group that everyone on this planet has heard about you have to uh, have heard about this this group the legendary Black Sabbath Black Sabbath and this is the first album which you of course know uh, released Friday the 13th of February 1970 and this airy fantastic looking cover uh, marvelous piece of artwork there and of course the upside down cross uh, and I am lucky this is actually the very first press of the record it has been re-released a number of times even on the Vertigo Swirl label and uh, often second or third pressings are sold as the first pressing on the eBay so beware this is the first edition label with a, a Philips record product credit under the Vertigo logo there and it has to have the big swirl which goes down to the a spindle hole there. That's the first press. And the way to tell that the covers, the first generation of covers, is that in the credits here, I don't know if you can read it, but here it has to say uh, warning copyright subsists in all stereo recordings. That was quickly changed to vertigo recordings from stereo recordings so this is the first issue cover quite a nice gem to have in my collection I'm really satisfied to have this one uh, and these go for silly money these days even though they sold quite a lot but to find them in good nick such as this one is uh, fairly rare I guess everyone brought their Black Sabbath records to parties back in the day. Many of them were beat up. Next one is of course the legendary Paranoid. Paranoid. You all know this one. <laughs> but I have to show it anyway since this is about Vertigo Swirl. A wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, cover. Uh, this uh, album was supposed to be called War Pigs, but the uh, record company 
wouldn't uh, let them call the album War Pigs and they changed it to <laughs> Paranoid. It's a rather strange cover. This is actually not the first cover because uh, there is a credit line here with Big Bear and uh, Jim Simpson management with, uh, which was uh, erased and withdrawn. So this is the second pressing I guess, but still on uh, with the big vertigo ball there, <clears throat> because this was in 1970. Uh, to tell you a little about about uh, variations, in 1971 they changed the design a little bit. They made this vertigo ball a little bit smaller and they moved the vertigo logo under the ball over the spindle hole. So every record which has the vertigo logo over the spindle hole, they're from 1971. Beware if you want to buy first pressings. But I guess you all know that. It's rather common knowledge. If, if there's one label that should be common knowledge in the record collector world, it's Vertigo's world. And I guess it is at least becoming common knowledge. Nevertheless, intriguing and quite fun. And my god, so many good albums on the label. <coughs> the next one is a little bit interesting because uh, it's a Black Sabbath Master of Reality. Uh, and this is not the UK pressing. Uh, and not with the poster. This is the Norwegian pressing actually one of the very few Vertigo Swirl records ever pressed in Norway. The covers, cover is printed in Norway. It has a little logo there which says Team Trick, a Norwegian company. And it of course lacks the Vertigo Swirl in the sleeve. And the record is also pressed in Norway. Standard label there. And the Norwegian label there. Some differences. Uh, the UK should have a reversed vertigo swirl ball here, where the white was black and the black was white, and the uh, B-side, the label was black with white text. Just for you to know. <coughs> also, the UK cover was a box cover with uh, the opening on the top with the lid. And the first pressings had a large poster accompanying that. Of course I want that one as well, but who can afford it? We'll see if I get lucky one day. <coughs> the last Sabbath record on Vertigo Swirl was uh, Volume 4, which is a fantastic album as well. All the Black Sabbath albums with Ozzy <laughs> Osbourne, they were, according to my ears, quite fantastic. This is a nice cover with a booklet with colored photographs. Uh, let me see here. Of uh, every, everyone in the band. Just a fantastic uh, package here. You don't get that in CD, do you? Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I guess I don't need to show you the label, but I'll do it anyway. Yes, and this record was released in 1972. So here you can see that the Vertigo logo has been moved to above the spindle hole. And this is then the original pressing. Of course, there are multiple presses of this one as well, with fairly similar labels, but there are some small differences which you have to be aware of. I'm not aware of all the differences myself. I don't know whether this is a first or second pressing, but it's a UK one, so I'll set, settle for that. <coughs> I guess I have time to show you 
a couple of more records before I have to uh, switch off the camera and make part two. So let's go with uh, the one and only Graham Bond and his uh, holy magic. Uh, <laughs> what can you say about this record? Except that it's strange, very strange. Occult psychedelic blues is perhaps uh, the most accurate description. Uh, I do enjoy this album. It's not as experimental as it sounds. It's rather standard blues with um, occult lyrics. But uh, Graham Bond was a talent, a big talent on the organ and on the saxophone and on the vocals. So I really enjoy his records. And this is one you have to get, I think. It's, uh, if it's not a classic, it's an obscure, fun piece of music anyway. And uh, the last one with Holy Magic was this. Graham Bond with Holy Magic. We put our magic on you. From 1972, I think. 71 or 72. Always uh, fantastic artwork on these, uh, on these covers. 1971, yes. So, if you're into uh, Graham Bond, you should know him from the Graham Bond organization with Dick Hextel Smith, Jack Bruce, and uh, the infamous Ginger Baker. Uh, so, if you're into that kind of thing, you have to check out Graham Bond. Now, I think I'll turn off my camera to make sure that everything <laughs> is in part one and I'll make a part two shortly. Bye for now.